About two weeks ago, my wife and I met up with a couple who invited us out for lunch. Uh, they were in town to uh, finish up some paperwork on an apartment they were about to rent. So we went out, had lunch, and one of the questions I asked them, I said, so how soon are you planning to uh, actually move once you sign your paperwork for the apartment? And their answer to me or response was, depending on who wins the election, will determine how fast we move or leave the United States. And I thought that was interesting. So I decided, hey, let me do a video about what happens if your candidate does not win the election. And this topic comes up every election cycle about what if my candidate doesn't win, what do I do next? So I'll give you one fact and two options. The fact is, is that regardless of whoever wins, Life, in general, and your life will continue to go on. That's a fact. Or you got two options, and one of those options is you can stay put and adjust to the new administration, or option two, that could be your sign to start a new life abroad. For some people, the thought of living in a new country with different opportunities, different cultures, it starts to sound appealing. But if you ever actually wonder, is this something that you can do? Then watch this video. Now moving abroad can be a huge step, but it's not impossible because in fact, many people move abroad every year for many reasons, for political differences, a fresh start, different cultural experiences, or just a simple lifestyle change. So can you start a new lifestyle abroad if your candidate doesn't win? The answer is yes. And here's how. So the first step is you have to pick a destination. Where do you want to go? And for me, this is the most exciting part of this process because here's where you ask yourself, what type of lifestyle do you want? Do you want the lifestyle of laid back beach vibes like the Dominican Republic? Or you want that historic cultural scenery like in Europe? Or do you want that vibrant upbeat culture of Southeast Asia? Make sure you consider things like climate, language, job opportunity, culture differences, because these are all things that's going to help you make that decision. So for example, Dominican culture to me wasn't so drastic that I didn't feel that I could adjust here easily. Where I feel that Asian culture is drastically different than the Western world, that trying to adjust to that culture may be a little bit more difficult to me. Now, I've never been to Asia, never lived in Asia, so I could be wrong. So if I am, drop it in the comment, let me know is Asian culture that much harder to adjust to than just say Caribbean culture. Also, you wanna look at that country's visa policies just to see how lenient or extreme they are because some countries have policies that, are, that make it much more easier for expats to settle, which leads me to number two research the residency and visa processes in the country of your choosing. Every country has a different immigration policy, so you will have to figure out how you can legally live in these countries. A lot of these countries have retirement visa programs, even digital nomad programs. While some may require you to have a job lined up before you move, or either have some type of financial stability like a certain type of reoccurring income every month. So what you'll wanna do is visit the official government website or whatever country you're looking to move to or talk to a qualified immigration attorney. Now these processes can take months, so you wanna start early. I know we late in the game, but you still may wanna start early. I had to turn around because that sun started to hit different in the position that I was in. So let's go to number three, which is the most important for me, and I think should be for everybody, is make sure your finances are together. Yes, guys, money matters. Before you make that leap, you need to assess your financial situation. Create a budget of what it's gonna cost for rent, groceries, health insurance, car insurance, and also expenses for unexpected emergencies. And make sure you understand the cost of living in some of these countries. Places like Mexico and Thailand, I heard you can live off a modest budget, but here in Dominican Republic, depending on where you live, you can also live off a modest budget, but there are areas here that are very expensive. So if you're looking to move in those, those particular areas, you wanna make sure that you have enough finances to be able to cover yourself while you're living in some of those areas. And number four, tie up all your loose ends before you move. So while you're preparing for that big move, you wanna make sure you have all your affairs in order 
before heading off. This means making sure you've handled all outstanding obligations like debt and things of that nature. And if you own a home, you wanna make sure you decide whether you're gonna rent it, sell it out, or Airbnb it. And if you have a car, you wanna decide whether you're gonna sell it or ship it to your final destination. And number five, now that you move, it's time to get adjusted in your new country. And listen, this is where the adventure begins. And remember, getting adjusted in a new country takes time. Don't listen to people tell you they got adjusted in three to six months. It really takes time because a lot of times people, when people move, the language is different, the culture is different, and just the whole way of life is different. So it takes a little bit more than a few months in order to get adjusted. And one of the best ways to get adjusted is join expat groups. Also, learn the local language and involve yourself in some of the local activities in that country. And listen, the more you immerse yourself in these cultures, the quicker you'll feel at home. And listen, give yourself some grace. You may feel homesick in the beginning because everything can be overwhelming. But sooner or later, down the line, if you stick with it, you'll figure it all out. And this has always been my advice to people when they ask me about moving to the Dominican Republic and what are some of my challenges? And I tell them, immerse yourself into the culture. If you move here and play the foreigner, yeah, there's, there's, there's room for that if you want to, but you'll never feel like this place is home. Now that doesn't mean that you're gonna ever be Dominican. I don't think anybody moves here wants to be a Dominican. I think everybody is good with their, who they identify with uh, from a, um, a country standpoint. But you also want to feel like you fit in into the culture. If not, then you're always going to feel like that outsider. Me personally, I don't feel like an outsider, even though I know I am. I don't feel like one. When I walk in the streets, when I go to these restaurants, I'm in the mall, I'm out in public, I feel like I fit into the culture. So I think it's always important, no matter where you go, try to fit into the culture as much as you can. The next thing you want to do is build a support system. Just because you move to another country doesn't mean you have to do it alone. Trust me, there, ha there is somebody who has moved there by themselves just like you. There, matter of fact, there's many people who have moved to a new country and in the same situation as you. So you want to reach out to other expats, make friends with the locals. And when I tell you here in Dominican Republic, it is very easy to talk to people. People are so welcoming and open to you. So here is not a real problem building a support system. And the last one, embrace your experience. At the end of the day, when you move abroad, it's about embracing the unknown and stepping out of your comfort zone. Yes, you will face challenges, but you will also grow in ways that you never imagined. So if you're open to this experience, it may be the best decision that you've ever made. So whether your candidate wins or loses, starting a new life abroad is within your reach. So guys, let me know in the comment section below, what are your plans if your candidate does not win the next presidential election? Now, I'm not interested in hearing who your candidate is. I don't care who it is. So don't go and give me any verbal diarrhea talking about Trump and talking about Harris. I don't care. What I want to know is what do you plan on doing if your candidate wins or loses? Are you planning to stay put and adjust or are you planning to take that leap and move abroad? So until then, y'all already know, keep your goals at the forefront of your mind. Always live in the present because that's the only way you're going to live your best life. And I'm out. Peace. Your book was my best life, yeah. Your book was my best life, yeah. Something you and me, oh. Your book was my best life, yeah. Jumping, flexing, oh. Uh -huh.